Okay, let's set the stage here. The year is 2022. The weather's too bad for your Domino's delivery drone to deliver pizza to your front door. So you call up the Tesla full self-driving taxi network to take you to Domino's so you can go in person and pick up your pizza that rightfully should have been delivered by a drone. Uh, but instead you're gonna have to use uh, an autonomous vehicle to get you there. So we're here at our house, we'll call it. And we're gonna go to Domino's. A few turns, a very interesting route. Uh, more turns here than typical. So I'm excited to try this one and we'll see how this works. So uh, it says we'll take 10 minutes to get there. We'll see how that plays out. So some comments I have on uh, these types of roads, these residential roads, uh, I think are the most refined out of everything for full self-driving. Um, as I say that, it thinks there's a stop there when there wasn't. Um, here's a dog and a baby. So we are going slow. The car potentially sees them and goes slowly. Okay, very good. Uh, so what I was saying, these types of roads with parked cars along the side, trash cans, no lane markings, they feel the most refined to me uh, out of everything. Uh, it seems like it just does very, very good and competent on uh, these types of roads. Uh, I'm super impressed always, and I have been for a long time uh, on these types of roads. So we're getting out of our neighborhood here. It's not my neighborhood, but our theoretical neighborhood. And we're gonna go get our Domino's pizza that we just ordered. Speaking of which, I feel like drone delivery should be a thing already. It seems like, it seems like that, I mean, that should be a solved problem, way more than full self-driving cars are. I, uh, I don't quite understand, I guess it's just regulatory uh, intervention, or regulatory uh, reasons that delivery drones aren't a thing, but it seems like you should be able to order a pizza and they put it in a drone and it flies to your house and drops it off. It just seems like the technology's I mean, from what I know, it's basically 100% there, so I don't understand why that's not a thing. Anyway, I guess uh, we'll just have to rely on a full self-driving car to get us there at 20 miles per hour. I'll flick it up to 25, since that's the legal speed limit. Okay, here's our first major action point on this route. Up to this point, we've just been lane keeping. So what we have is we have a guardrail to the left that's blocking vision. I can see it's clear. The car goes. Beautiful. Perfect. I've been driving for an hour and one minute so far, 18 miles. Uh, this has been very good. Um, you know, a few interventions here, nothing too crazy. Um, the Model 3 coming up. Nice red one. So we're doing a left turn here. So, you know, if it were me, I would have gotten over sooner, especially if there's potential for traffic. It was fine. I mean, I would have done it sooner. The car did it later, and they were fine. You know, it's one of those situations where neither was right or wrong, just different. Um, although I think I could argue that it's better to get over earlier in case, you know, there's traffic behind you who's coming up from behind and stuff like that. But uh, the end result is it was successful. Protected left turn arrow. And make this left turn. Very good. And then, oh wow, and then immediate right turn. I'm trying not to get excited, but sometimes I get the feeling that they tweak the knobs behind the, behind the scenes a little bit. And uh, sometimes I feel like you get a glimpse of what it's really capable of. That's just my pet theory, because uh, sometimes it's not so great, sometimes it's really bad, uh, and and then other times it's very, very good. So I have this sneaking suspicion that they're twisting the knobs behind the scenes and collecting statistics on uh, a whole bunch of things that are way beyond the purview of anyone in the beta program. But once in a while, it just seems like it does really, really, really well. And, ooh, that curb is close. I know it was good, but that curb was awfully close. It didn't hit, though, but I don't want to scratch him regardless. And also, don't, don't forget that uh, just because you didn't scratch, there's a lot of trash in the gutter. Nails, staples, all that type of stuff, right? 
So just because it doesn't hit the curb doesn't mean you want to be that close anyway. Uh, getting too close to the curb is definitely something that I'm not a fan of, that it does kind of on the regular. Uh, there was one drive where I thought absolutely for sure uh, I curbed both my left and right uh, rear tires, wheels, but miraculously neither one hit. It was, it had to be within an inch. Uh, and I heard a crash, but it must have been trash in the gutter that I heard. Okay, unprotected left. There's a car. They're going straight, and we're going to stop. Okay. Very good. It gives a chime. Not sure why. Uh, I have another... This is completely just me do, uh, thinking about how I would do things. Uh, but if I were releasing the beta to a wider fleet of people, um, I think I would have gear stock confirmation for most... Well, for all unprotected uh, maneuvers. I think it should give a chime. And then you confirm that it's safe. Like right now, we have a protected arrow. I don't think there's a reason to have a chime there. And the car did absolutely fantastic, right? But I think for wide public release in the beginning, all unprotected maneuvers, I would strongly advise a confirmation for all unprotected turns. Um, I think I think with that, I think that would massively improve the safety uh, and allow for drivers potentially with less vigilance uh, to get involved with the beta. Um, because, I mean, the chime, it keeps you involved, right? Uh, trains, locomotives have something similar where they have a, a button called an alerter, and the driver has to hit the alerter every so often, uh, otherwise the train will shut itself down. So it ensures that there's always a human in the loop. Um, I think on this locomotive, I think it's the timer. I, I'm not an expert, but it's either like you operate a control, or if you don't operate a control in a certain time span, you have to hit the alerter to uh, let the thing know that you're still there. Um, with full stop driving, it'd be similar. It, it would be only at actual action points, potentially. I mean, the, the torque on the wheel keeps you involved always, but the actual uh, ding, okay, we should go now. We should have went prior to them, but uh, curiously it went exactly as I was getting impatient. Um, but yeah, I think uh, confirmation of all unprotected maneuvers, that would drastically increase the safety of a wide public release. And of course, over time, that would be, you know, disabled once, in theory, they collect however much data, you know, on a billion intersections or whatever. So far, this drive has been very, very good. Uh, we got a little bit close to the curb on that one turn there, uh, but this has been a very good drive. Uh, not super challenging, but I mean, we are interacting with traffic and stuff like that. So I'm impressed. Uh, even as a pseudo long-term tester, I've been doing this for, I guess, three months almost now, uh, something like that. Uh, I feel like this is a very good drive. It's it's smooth. It's, it's Something's different. And like I was saying a little bit ago, I think there's some knobs getting turned behind the scenes. So here we have a curb that could potentially be an issue. Uh, if we want to turn right on red, we're going to have to creep out. Or we could just wait until the light turns green. Uh, we do have a car beside us that's blocking our view to the left. You can see that. Um, okay, we're creeping. Okay, it's not clear. We're fine. We're still 10, 10 feet back from the travel lane. It feels like I'm really far forward, but really, I'm, I mean, the nose of the car is more than 10 feet from the cars. Uh, it's probably not going to clear up before... Okay, I can go now. There's no one behind me, so I'm not super impatient. These guys are turning, so they're effectively blocking um, traffic. So they... Okay, there's a car coming now. Okay, they're stopping, so they must have a red. There's our green, and we go. Okay, so we didn't take the opportunity to turn right on red, even though we probably could have, um, but it was a very safe maneuver. Um, it waited for its turn. It was trying to go, but it just didn't find an opportunity. And I, I as a human, I could have gone, for sure. Um, but it, I mean, it was, there were no gaps that were big enough that I would feel super comfortable with it attempting. Okay, so here's our, uh, here's our okay, we swung wide. There's no one behind us. And we turn in, it's rough. <laughs> um, we made it, okay. That was a good drive, that was a great drive. I mean, uh, in theory, we just went from our house to Domino's and basically right up to the drive through I mean, that's a tweak there, right? Here we are, look at that. That was a good drive, that was a great drive. Um, that was a great drive. I mean, if, if full self-driving beta can perform to that level uh, on every drive, uh, people's minds are about to be blown, but I've seen so many circumstances where 
it's not that great. Um, which is, this is like the third or fourth time I mentioned it, which leads me to believe that there's stuff behind the scenes that we're not seeing. I don't want to get people's hopes up, but it's, it's possible that they could turn on all the good code and, and things could be a lot better. I don't know. Uh, but that was a very good drive. Um, drives like that get me excited to do another, another drive. So we'll see, we'll see what I decide on here.